Welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel for the weekly Hylion update. This video is going to touch on 12 reasons why I think um, Hylion should not be overlooked. It should absolutely be looked at as an investing opportunity. I'm going to give you 12 reasons as to why I think that's it. And for most investors right now, I don't think people want to even hear the word investing. I think people are uh, really soured right now by financial markets. I don't know if people are hunkering down. I, I don't know if they're preparing for a long winter. I, I don't know. Um, but uh, these are the very times when astute investors need to pay attention. Um, they need to uh, they need to bear down because if you ignore these opportunities, they're going to come and go not to uh, repeat themselves. Um, it's the very times when people think that there is no opportunity that people need to absolutely pay attention um, and, and, and really fight the temptation not to pay attention to financial markets because it's easy to do so. Let's get right into it. Hylion boasts an opportunity right now to penetrate an industry um, that is a $1 trillion industry. It is uh, the main focus of our logistics and transportation sector that have been heavily reliant upon uh, diesel to fuel this opportunity uh, going forward. Hylion is looking to leverage um, one of many strategies right now um, with renewable natural gas and compressed natural gas using existing infrastructure. A lot of different schools of thought on this. I'm not gonna get too overblown, but just as a general thesis and introduction to those folks that are unfamiliar with, what Hylion is looking to do in the interim, go after the renewable uh, and natural gas market, and then look to segue into more of an agnostic future, um, leveraging the power of what's going on with the technology and develops in, in hydrogen fuel cells. So super exciting times with the opportunity. And I, I just think with the drawdown in the market, um, a lot of what is being misconstrued right now as Hylion's shortcomings um, are actually uh, based on the very, very poor market sentiment right now and a stock market that cannot get out of its own way. Um, even with positive news, the uh, consensus now is that the Fed is probably going to overshoot. Uh, I believe that they will. Uh, I believe that the Fed does not take into consideration more of a forward thinking type of uh, perspective and understanding the ramifications of the decisions that they're making now. They're just trying to curb inflation now, and even those are somewhat lagging as well. Um, so all of these interest rate hikes take time uh, to materialize over time, and I think they'll probably end up overshooting like they typically do. But the opportunity is not to be understated here. Um, number two, the vision uh, made possible by uh, founder and CEO Thomas Healy. His vision is very, very simple. Um, the, the vision is to uh, provide a solution for those shipping and logistics businesses out there that are in all of my assessment starving for a solution that they can bring forward and help them uh, help themselves and also help the customers that are demanding a shift uh, from a, a diesel dominated past into uh, more of an environmentally conscious future. And that's really the vision uh, for, for why this initiative makes sense. Um, why it garners so much attention, because it is important. It's important that we have these discussions. I'm um, appalled a lot of the times, calmly. Uh, you might follow me on Twitter and think that I'm angry or that I'm uh, disappointed or, or, or uh, the like. Um, that's not the case at all. I guess my disappointment more so is all of the naysayers that seemingly want to see this company uh, not get ahead. And I contend to my friends that the vision and, and what they're looking to bring forward will make the world a better place than uh, with it than without it. That's for sure. Number three, um, the product itself. The product itself is phenomenal. It's the only company out there that's not looking to completely redesign the trucking industry. It's looking to augment their solution with the trucking uh, industry, and they've taken on um, 11 partners on the uh, in Hypertruck Innovation Council to help them do that along with many other players out there, both private companies and publicly traded companies uh, to help um, uh, um, really uh, 
fine tune their proof of concept. I hate to say that because it's far in advance of um, final stages of product verification um, through their summer uh, ride and drive events, their summer uh, over the road test and, and rigor, as, as well as moving into uh, the final uh, stages of what I think has been an, an ongoing winter validation for the product itself. But for those of you who don't know, um, a couple of different products that branch into multiple products with Hylion, they are in the ground floor uh, of this evolution. The company is only a couple of years old, which in, in retrospect is a drop in the bucket uh, for a new company on what they could leverage with their product. Um, but the hybrid product is more of a, of a supplement uh, to the CNG market to add horsepower, um, as well as the, uh, to supplement the existing diesel market. Uh, to help drive down some of the high fuel cost of diesel right now. Uh, and then their flagship product is the Hypertruck ERX, which is boasts uh, running on um, compressed natural gas. And where uh, renewable natural gas is run in the unit boasts a net negative uh, carbon emission score, which actually is plays into the opportunity and the vision that I just spoke about uh, for companies that can take on this solution and, and drive their carbon score um, in, in uh, multiple categories, which uh, every company now has it. Uh, every single company out there has um, uh, an ESG or a governance score as it pertains to the environment. Uh, and these companies are, are really hungry right now to kind of see the final stages of these companies that are getting their final iterations of these products turned out to the market. But uh, um, with, the, with their two flagship products and, and the uh, finalization of the Carno generator as well, perhaps maybe taking and producing cheaper energy, I think Hylion is at the very, very beginning stages. And it's very difficult to understand now um, with what opportunity they're going to look to press upon uh, to garner these revenues internally with the company. But like I said, it's going to be exciting times uh, as they set sail on each of these opportunities. Some may prove to be um, a little less successful. Thomas Healy has alluded to this with the hybrid uh, EX product here with marked competition out there. I think the market is big enough for everybody. So I'm not one to sit here and throw in the towel um, just yet to suggest that uh, competition is going to come and drown out highly on. I, I don't, I don't see that happening. And I think it's a lot more premature to have those discussions um, rather than just focusing on the actual opportunity that they bring to bear. Um, the timing I put in the, in the positive category here for highly on look guys, if you were looking to take an ownership stake in the, in the stock, we're about uh, 14 months away from the uh, the potential to start to realize deliveries for fleets, uh, the poor market conditions right now uh, is only giving highly on the ample time they need to proceed along their checklist to uh, final uh, iteration and product verification and certification, all very, very important milestones. They can't sell the product outright until they uh, achieve those certifications, and they will. Um, they've got plenty of players on board to help them achieve those certifications, and it is just a matter of time uh, before Hylion can actually align and, and hope for better days in the market because there's so much headwind right now. There's very little companies right now, even our largest, most beloved companies right now are falling off. Apple computers, which always gets a, a nod in the marketplace, is also rolling off off 20, 25% here. Um, every company in the market that I cover, I don't see any bright spots at all. Um, they're all getting crushed and, and Hylion is no different. But uh, um, if you actually look at the um, the 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 uh, staying power of the stock over the last couple of months. Just as of late, it's taken a, a slight nosedive. I'll talk about that a little bit here. Um, but um, the, the, the timing here couldn't be better um, in hoping for better days down the line, because even if Hylion were to throw it into six gear right now, I think a lot of the news, if any, that they could release now would probably fall on deaf ears and be consumed by what has been um, chalked up as a very negative sentiment here. And it's looking like it's going to persist through uh, 2022 and into 2023. So why rush? Uh, right. Uh, why not get this thing right? And I think that's exactly what they're doing with the highly on team internally. Um, the, the industry that they're looking to penetrate here is one of 
uh, of interest to me. Look, if you want to be a commodities investor, fine. If you want to go and um, dabble in different industries out there, no problem. Make no mistake, guys, this is the trucking um, and logistics space. Um, this is a, a part of the industrial market. I would put highly on um, with a niche of technology as well with the proprietary software and onboard uh, analytics and, and data crunching that they do for customers just another pocket of, of income stream that they could pursue uh, as they take on some of this logistic support um, and, and move into a new era of what I think is going to be um, a lot more preventative uh, maintenance in uh, monitoring these systems as data comes in and they're able to fine tune their maintenances to basically build a more efficient uh, industry. So I think when we talk about it from an industry perspective, and an opportunity perspective, it doesn't get any better than this. Uh, it's very, very difficult to see sometimes through the noise with a company like this that is brand new. It's still in the incubator. It's still, <laughs> it's still looking to get its footing to grow its team and and grow on multiple fronts here. Um, and this will take this will take multiple years to realize. Uh, where I think that this vision will end up being. I think for the short term, I think to get it out of the dungeon would be probably a, a real give back and a win. And we, we always have to consider um, the, the possibility of that happening anytime. Uh, I think it's a dangerous game to be playing right now with trying to play this whole, you know, calling where it's going to go. Um, I stopped doing that a long, long time ago, not only the, with this company, but many others that I, I cover. It's just a futile effort. And I think our focus needs to be on those tried and true reasons as to why we either do or don't take a position in this company, because everything else uh, is really just uh, just hot air and discussion at this point to either validate on one side or the other, what decision that we've made to take an investment. Um, the, the opportunity that I speak of with regard to the need for this product, we, we are in such need for this product. And I'm not gonna get into whether or not I think global warming is a thing or not. I have my own personal uh, beliefs about this, uh, but, 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 but why does it really matter? Why, why aren't we doing everything that we can possibly do as a people uh, to, to do what we need to do to help the planet, right? So then you sit back and you say, is there a need for this product, okay? Now, a lot of people will say that the only solution is hydrogen. Um, I think that's an escape to thinking because I think while we are waiting for hydrogen to come online, and I think that it's going to be a, a pivotal technology, um, and a transformational one over the next 10 or 20 years. I, I, I'm of the camp that we can't wait. The hunger in the industry needs to be fed. And if we end up waiting too long, um, we're, we're just going to end up prolonging the problem. Could we end up doing that with what I believe we are in right now with our current situation with um, with, 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 with the earth and, and how much, you know, uh, objective we need or attention we need to be putting toward this front. No, I, I don't because the technology is there now. I, I believe that we need to start to put some of these trucks into the rigor. Thomas Ely just of late talked about some of the failure rates of some of these new rigs, um, Nicola being subject to a big recall. Um, those things are to be expected and are normal. Uh, it's just, it's not really a knock on Nicola. It's just a speak. It's, it's an acknowledgement to how early on these companies are in the inception of providing um, solutions going forward. And, and there are going to be road bumps. There are going to be um, uh, problems and there are going to be problems that are unforeseen. There's no matter how much validation you can do um, to, um, to um, uncover all potential flaws in your design. Um, but uh, over time, we, we, we hope that once we put these in play, we can understand what works, what works best, and draw that data off of there to really understand how we can supplement the need um, in the best and most efficient way that we can. Look, if Hylion is not the best solution and it is not the best need, then no problem. But I expect over the next five to 10 years for those questions to be answered. My friends, right now, we are not there. We do not have those answers. We don't have the answers to say this or that is going to be the solution, even from the majors or some of the minor players like Hylion and Nikola. Um, Tesla has just introduced their truck to Pepsi. Nobody knows. 
nobody really knows right now uh, enough to call a winner in the industry outside of the fact that all of these uh, players right now in the space will be com key contributors to the technology evolving over time, where we can start to make some real decisions about how it affects the bottom line for the industries that they serve. Hylion has always taken a different business plan and approach. They run what is considered to be a business lean model. I found a lot of people online who find it convenient to suggest that Hylion should sell trucks. Um, I couldn't disagree more. I think that's an idiotic approach. I think the smart thing to do is do what Hylion has always said that they were going to do, and that's focus on the area of the truck that needs to be improved upon and no more. Um, it's one of the main, main bullish convictions that I have in the company. Um, it, you know, and at five. Hundred million. It, it, this is small potatoes. Um, the, the the company stock has sunk into oblivion. Um, it's non-existent anymore. But I think the splash that they're looking to make here with their business plan allows them to rest upon um, their uh, their large cash position and get it right. I think they can take this time. I think they can leverage relationships. I, Thomas Healy just as of late spoke about this when he was addressing uh, their relationship with Penske. And the idea that I've said and talked about for the last two years is to get some of these players on the, on the line and then have them go back to the OEM like Peterbilt and say, hey, look, I want 25 of my units to be highly on units off of the line. Let's make that critical connection uh, to, 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 to our businesses and the orders that exist for us. Let's make this happen. There doesn't need to be a sale from Hylion to Peterbilt. There doesn't need to be a sale from Peterbilt to the customer. It's just that everybody benefits more symbiotically by looking at this business plan that Hylion has brought forward to the market, being lean and looking to augment and, and, and support the OEMs and to support their customers in the areas of the truck that need attention no more. OK, and, and this is one of the things that I think are, are, are overlooked all the time. But hey, um, who am I to say I just offer my unique perspective on this gig? Uh, and just like everybody is talking about right now, if the stock sinks into oblivion, uh, then they'll be right. Uh, if they're not right for the few of us that are actually uh, continuing to share the story, uh, believe in everything that I've just talked about. Look, guys, this is an early stage opportunity. It's early stage. And the greater the opportunity uh, exists with the further retractment in the stock price. In other words, there's going to be opportunity for people to get in on this if it does end up realizing this vision for what I talk about uh, for the future, which all the parts are in place it's going to create even more of a deeper opportunity for those investors who really look at it and agree with me that Hylion will make their mark. Uh, and having the business plan and the way that they do actually helps on that front. The stock price here, it hit all-time lows this week. And I think um, I, I felt like I felt like selling the stock. I really did. Just throw in the towel, right? Throwing in the towel on the stock right now is the biggest mistake that you can make. Remember when you invested in Hylion at $10, 20, 30, 40, 50, even dare I say $60, okay, 60. You at that point were investing in the stock, not the company, okay? And two years removed of those high stock prices, we have an inverse in the company making extreme progress and legs and the stock actually retracting to levels where it is now disproportionately inverse to what it was before. Hype on the onset with the stock at $58 and the company just at the onset, not having even near the orders that they boast right now. And now I think they need to do some work on solidifying some of those old orders um, that really have died on the vine as far as I'm concerned. I'm frustrated as well. But if we want to talk about bullish opportunity in the stock market, we need to look at companies like this that have just been thrown out with the bathwater, right? That have these opportunities in better and more conducive markets to really make a dent, to really start to solidify that order book, to really start to set the dominoes in motion with their innovation council, to really augment and really take a nice bite out of this huge huge addressable market that Hylion is going after. And they don't need very much. 
okay? They do not need very much to be self-sustaining. And once they're able to churn out 50 or $100 million in revenue, dare I say 150, which, which is going to put them into that profitability category, if they can't garner $50 million within the next three years, um, we're in trouble. And the project is for naught. I, I, I don't mean to be the bearer of reality, but Hylion at some point is going to have to be self-sustaining. They can't continue to pay huge salaries, continue to hire on, continue to incur a cash burn of around $135 million per year to keep the lights on and keep the business running and expect not to sell any product. They're expected to move out of 2022 with around $3 million of revenue. It's irrelevant and it is immaterial. It does not matter. What they're going to garner for 2023, I have no idea. I estimate that Thomas Healy will probably come out and throw another curveball and suggest that maybe they're going to up the, up the yearly um, uh, respected revenue projections to, I don't know, 5 million. Who knows? I mean, they need to start getting up into the 20, $25 million category like right now. Um, and we need to start seeing a massive ramp up enough to where we can shift the sentiment in understanding that there's an articulatable uh, uh, demand over the product, which right now there is none. There is no articulatable demand over the product. Right now, these companies are placing placing orders of 10 uh, hyper trucks, that doesn't speak to the demand. That speaks merely to uh, fleet interest into putting these uh, few initial trucks into the rigor of over the road and testing them themselves. That's what it means to me. I don't look at it as a bad or good thing. I just look at it on the onset to suggest that it is what it is. And that is an initial order to start to draw some metrics off of what Hylion brings to bear. Perhaps maybe they put these 10 trucks into the rigor of their own operations and they identify for themselves that it's just not for them. Maybe they identify that it's just uh, not performing the way that Hylion has projected that they are expected to perform too. And that's all fair. You can't expect that a company is going to step in and start placing 1,000 truck orders or big 250 truck orders. On a fleet of 4,000, you can expect that they're revolving their fleet or expanding their fleet every single year at about a 25% clip. Out of that amount, if they're doing, let's say, 1,000 off of the OEM, how much of that does, is, is Hylion going to potentially get? I would say that 10 to 20% is an absolutely phenomenal penetration rate absolutely phenomenal. And we're only talking 100 to 200 trucks at that point per fleet, uh, per respective fleet to, to help augment that. If we start moving in that direction, where those orders start to move off of the 10 order block and into the 20, 25, 50, 100, dare I say 500 to 1000 um, in, in the order book, that, then it's going to be game on. But until we get to that point, I think looking at the stock price here has to be looked at as an opportunity. If you're looking at stock the right way, the further it goes down, the more opportunity it becomes in a company that we have more conviction on now than we did on the onset. At least we've been provided all of that transparency now. Would you rather invest in highly on the company now or highly on the company that we thought was two years ago based on the stock price. When you look at it that way, you tend to separate the two in your mind and you really start to kind of see some clarity that I hope to share with the audience here in understanding my perspective of really separating the two. Um, you're gonna drive yourself batshit crazy if you don't, okay? Separate the two, understand what the company is going through right now, um, what those market pressures are and where the company stands to be in 12 to 24 months. You're going to look at a lot more clear uh, if you pr approach it that way. Um, and I think you'll probably be better off and actually um, really seeing this for what it is. Okay. Um, th the next thing I want to talk about with regard to one of the bullish convictions on Hylion is how it pertains to the overall stock market. There's some discussions right now, my friends, that it's going to take multiple years to pull ourselves out of this um, atrocious market that we've um, um, so quickly put ourselves in this tailspin. Um, I think with the assistance of thousands and thousands of people who thought they needed to get into a bidding war uh, on a home that they couldn't afford, and those prices now are just starting to roll off. High interest rates have put, um, well, let's just be fair, on the 30-year fixed mortgage, uh, much less attractive by probably five times a factor. 
right? So um, is there going to be a, bush, a rush of buying interest when markets, um, um, it, uh, mortgage interest were low? I think not. I think that's going to put a real hamper on those interested buyers out there who just really do the math and are making a responsible decision now not to opt into such a high market, knowing that the double whammy is that they're going to get whacked on the, on the high mortgage rates. So I digress. I look at the stock market in a whole, and I've read a lot of literature over the last couple of months discussing that this S&P 500 returns that we've been enjoying for the last, oh, 10, 12 years is going to slow down. And it's going to slow down to such an anemic pace uh, to suggest that outside of outpacing inflation uh, and taking a step above what you can get from a nice bond rendering, 6% a year is going to be the clip on the S&P 500. And a lot of people didn't like it when I talked about 8 to 10% rates of return in the market. And you can get wealthy on those amounts. People are really going to be pissed when they hear me talk about over the next you know, 5 to 10 years, we could have an overall average market of flatline to slightly positive. And that is expected to return maybe 6 to 8%. Uh, on the S&P. Do I personally believe that? No, I don't. But there is some merit to the argument, okay, in that there's so much damage being done right now, unless you're getting involved with the market now, or owned the markets at the peak and are retracting in their portfolio values, it's going to take that much more to get back to that level before you can actually start to separate and realize some alpha in your portfolio. How does this relate to Hylian? You think that the opportunity with Hylion going forward over the next five to 10 years is going to render, let's just say, on an average of 6% a year. Now, this is speaking to you in the face of what has been uh, a catastrophic downturn. Hylion has done nothing but go down, nothing. And every single year that goes by, we cap the year-over-year -year losses on Hylion and chalk it up and look to the next year uh, for specific opportunity. As it compares to the overall market, wouldn't you consider the opportunity with Hylion and being a little bit more opportunistic and where this company could potentially be in five to 10 years as it rests against the S&P? I don't know, uh, but I will, will be rest assured remembering when I talked about this S&P roll off at about 25% right now, which is an enormous wealth scrub. Uh, in the market and compare what you think is an opportunistic investor for everything that I've talked about in your market outlook. And yes, holding true on those S&P hold, holdings, that's what I'm going to do. But the reason why Hylion makes so much sense to me is I hold them in addition to a massive amount of wealth, at least for a small potato like me, right, in conjunction with those additional assets. Now, if I held them exclusively, or I held highly on exclusively, I'd be losing my marbles. A lot of people out there, I guess they do it. They own highly on exclusively and they're just like, yeah, it'll inevitably turn around. Yeah, okay. Uh, invest in hope uh, and hope for better days. I'm with you. Okay. I'm, I'm standing tall with the community and expecting over the next five to 10 years for highly on to really, really start to materialize and render some of the value in all of these multiple fronts of investments that they've made, growing the company, coming public, coming public with ample funding, having access to additional funding, right? Um, selling enough trucks and, and providing enough spark and interest or achieving enough in way of certification to generate enough churn of interest to say, hey, maybe, maybe we need to take a, another look. Maybe we need to take a second look at this company and really understand that maybe it shouldn't have been thrown out. Maybe we do need to understand that these guys can and do exactly what it is that they say they can. So I want you to think about it opportunistically. As an investor, you always have to look at being forward thinking and, and, and setting yourself up to benefit in multiple markets. This could be one of those things to where I set myself up and I don't benefit from it. But what I'm forecasting for markets going forward and the amount of damage that this has caused in investor sentiment here now, even for those investors that hold true and don't sell out, 
Um, we, we may do what it is that we've always done in these uh, recessive times and bear markets is we've scared enough people off of markets to where they don't want to participate at all. They just say to hell with it. I'm just going to earn my money. Okay. But to look at the opportunity, I think going forward is probably prudent at this point uh, to look at the 12 reasons as to why you need to look at Hylion here. Number 10 on the list is the specifications. Hylion boasts on the bottom line, and I, I'm, I'm not, I could sit here and say hi, pipe, pipe, but I, I don't do that. But the specifications of this company are downright impressive, okay? 75% of all electric range will be one of their many iterations of their Hypertruck ERX, their flagship product. The fact that, the fact that they can boast 1,000 road miles, okay, just speaks to what is needed in the industry, okay? And I think the Hypertruck is going to be for flat terrain, long haul across I-10, across I-84, right? It's going to be across those long runs where um, fuel efficiency and range are the key, uh, as well as getting the uh, appropriate benefits for uh, environmental st stewardship and governance, right? It, that's going to be key, all right? But when we talk about limiting downtime, bringing the charging station, this is what sets Hylion apart, uh, making them free of and independent of the grid. Uh, again, one of my bullish themes as to why I think Hylion is such a phenomenal idea. And it is, it's, it's a phenomenal idea. Um, I've never ever once second guessed uh, the, the idea behind Hylion. Um, the execution, sure, maybe there's roadblocks, maybe there's criticism there to be had on the company, but is it not fair to suggest that a company like Hylion that is so new in its inception is going to incur challenges, is going to incur road, road, block, road bumps, right? It, it's unfair to hold them to an expectation of perfection, and they've been far from it. Uh, in a, some certain categories, even myself, fall victim to being very overly scrutinizing, and in some cases, justifiably scrutinizing of the company. And in all fair in love and war, do I think it makes a damn bit of difference? No, no, I don't. Do I think the independent investor channel, uh, highly on weekly update makes a damn bit of difference? No, it doesn't outside of the few patrons that consume this message and appreciate it, which was really the bottom line deciding factor as to why I didn't shit can this project altogether. Because my friends, up until this week, I honestly felt like throwing in the towel on this. I honestly felt like Hylion is cutting a little bit too lean in allowing way too many days to go by without announcing anything. Uh, Nikola is founders under investigation, recalling all their trucks, but they still continue to fight forward and put multiple tweets out there per day. And we go multiple days without a single word from Hylion until we get some educational piece from Thomas Healy or, or acknowledging some obscure employee day. Um, those those things really set me off, and but but I'm not doing this for them. Um, I understand that it's an unappreciative product. I don't even think that he knows I do this every week. To be honest with you, I'd be surprised if he did. Uh, if he did, uh, he should honestly feel bad for not sending me just a private email and say, "Hey, thank you so much. You know, you're edgy, you generate churn." And we really appreciate it because we need this. We need people to become more aware of the story as we go forward. But when we look at the specifications of 80,000 payload, we look at the acceleration rate in diesel, we look at the hoteling, the driver experience. When we put all this together, the specifications just play into one of those many bullish lines of conviction that I would suggest people need to look at. Otherwise, they're going to really, really regret not looking at this company and, and saying, wow, um, why didn't I buy it when the company was free? Uh, the company's free right now. It's being valued at zero. Zero. Um, there, there is no acknowledgement whatsoever to the orders on the books. No acknowledgement whatsoever on all of the multiple things that I see going on with this company. Remember company up here and stock price down here, right? This inverse relationship now couldn't be any more extreme. And there's some schools of thought that suggest that it could go more extreme. I, I don't know that. Uh, I'm not in the business of projecting that a stock is going to go to a dollar or five dollars. I'm not in that business. I'm into investing in companies. And highly on holdings is an easy company to invest in. Stock, very, very difficult. It is not for the faint of heart. 
It is not for those untrained and highly disciplined investors with the ample risk tolerance to take this on. There's people right now that are saying certain things that would allude to the fact that they just did not have the stomach for this investment. No problem. I totally understand. This has been an absolute train wreck of a stock. Now, the company itself, by Thomas Healy's admission, the stock price right now isn't the focus. The stock price is not the focus right now. The focus right now is getting through these multiple catalysts over the next 14 months that will inevitably drive the stock price to where we can actually get some equilibrium between the company and the stock. But right now, the disconnect couldn't be any more real between the two, all right? The 11th item that I want to identify here with Hylian as being a phenomenal investment now is the fuel of choice. Um, renewables has always been one of those things that I've looked at as just making sense. Uh, to take pollution and, and run it in a truck and doing so at such a high level just makes sense. Uh, and I think companies understand that, and there are initiatives on all the fronts. And I think the initiatives that a lot of people talk about to suggest that it's just going to be hydrogen, um, oh, they're dead wrong. They are dead wrong. The initiatives right now are trying to push forward the solutions on all fronts, and renewable natural gas will continue to be part of the discussion. It's not going to be as if, no, no, because I feel this way, we're just going to emit renewable natural gas. That's just not what the landscape is showing us. What the landscape is showing is that the industry as a whole and the need right now is to explore all options and to look to potentially exploit all options. Now, if you just can't physically use the infrastructure, it kind of makes that decision a no-brainer when we're talking about the availability of RNG on the open marketplace. But the fuel is one of those reasons to absolutely look at this company as being one of those companies that is going to emerge from the ashes here. And people are going to say, wow, I cannot believe I missed that opportunity when it was at $2.50 a share. The last thing I will mention to you guys as far as me culminating this list of 12 things to look at when you're looking to take an investment uh, position in this or look to add this to your watch list and just follow the company from a story perspective. Um, I'm just telling you what I'm doing. I'm buying the stock here. Um, I bought 1,000 shares last week, and I'm going to carefully monitor the situation uh, going forward because I think we're being provided a freaking gift right now. This is a gift. The shares right now are as cheap as they can possibly be at even money of the company. Uh, it's It doesn't get any better. Could the stock go down? Yes, it could. But again, that is not my job. That is not my uh, insistence in trying to call a bottom in a stock that has proved nothing over the last many, many uh, months uh, and years since coming inception that it cannot find its own floor because it just does not know how to price itself. There's too much disparity on the market interest, yes, but how little uh, Hylion is being perceived as garnering thus far in the marketplace. They have to bridge that gap. They have to. And until they're able to bridge that, and start a little bit of churn and start a little bit of organic, not mechanical uh, type of momentum, then Hylion is going to continue to suffer. And this is my thesis for my frustration is that Hylion doesn't seem to understand the sense of urgency. I believe there's a sense of urgency. Hylion is perceived that there is no sense of urgency. So um, what gives? Uh, I think they should start that now while they're still sitting on 500 million on the books of cash instead of waiting until they're plumb dry and the stock is at 50 cents and saying, oh, okay, now we need to realize that perhaps maybe we need to do some things. I don't know, liquidate the company, pay shareholders back. This project is not going anywhere. Fleets are not interested. See, that's just a scenario that I think about and I don't think is, is what's happening in real, reality. I think the behind the scenes is that Hylion knows exactly how much interest is there and they're willing to put full force into that, that effort. But until this 12th item comes into play, there's still a few things that need to fall in line. I mentioned the certifications from CARB and NHTSA. These are the EPA certifications for over the road transit. Uh, trucking companies are not gonna introduce those units until that they can uh, reach those certifications in mass scale. They're not gonna do that, okay? Right now they're in the test phase uh, to making sure that they can run the, uh, run the units in their fleets uh, and, and, and draw off those statistics about how efficient that they can be. 
But the last thing I will mention to you guys, and it gets forgotten all the time, and I think it's a real mistake in your investing thesis if you forget the fact that state and federal mandates are coming. They are coming. And these companies are, uh, are working hard, so they are not surprised, and they are not caught off guard, and dare I say, not subject to the government putting their uh, big, uh, big arm of the law in there and saying, even if you're not ready, we're going to force you to do this. No, no, no. Those mandates are out there where the OEMs have to produce a certain number of uh, percentage of the fleet that's turned off. Therefore, the fleets also have a mandate to accept a certain uh, percentage into their fleet. Don't you think that that drives some incentive to get those fleets, those units into those positions so they can start to draw the data? The data, they cannot be stuck back on their heels when these mandates take effect. I believe in 2025, the preparation has to happen now, has to happen now where these fleets are going to be hungry for these units to put into the rigor of over-the-road trans transit to get their goods from point A to point B and start to draw that data off of there to start to answer one of two questions. Is it beneficial? Is it not? Can it drive down my carbon score or will it not? Is it more efficient? Do my drivers like it more or less? Can I haul freight as reliable, less reliable, or more reliably than diesel? Does the torque matter, right? Does the hoteling matter? Does the cost, is there an actual payback to total cost of ownership over the life of the vehicle? This right here is one thing I called a long, long time ago before I even knew that the ACT and the ACEM mandates were coming down the line. This is one thing that I talked about with regard to a catalyst that would drive this company. And when we start to hear about these orders coming through and start to hear the discussion about why these fleets are adopting these units as alternative solutions, it's going to come full circle as to why you needed to understand this opportunity right now in the depths of the neon green hell, okay? And nobody in their right mind is looking at this, but whoever suggested that the right mind was successful in stock market investing, you got to be a little bit insano. All right. You got to be a little bit contrarian and you have to have some instinct and you have to have some imagination as to understanding where a specific company is as it reflects to its stock price, if that's what you feel like you need to do. But more importantly, where it could potentially go into the future. Guys, I appreciate you tuning in to this weekly update on the Hylion story. As it evolves, we'll continue to cover the story going forward as it is one of the most important developing stories of our time right now. The headwinds in the market are very, very real. The real estate market and the, the, the suffrage and the carnage that is gonna come out of that is very, very real. But what I said at the top of this, it's going to be incumbent upon investors to look through the, 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 the storm. You gotta be able to look through the smoke and you gotta be able to see clearly through at those opportunities that are gonna become much more apparent. And it's gonna be like walking on the beach and finding things that the wind has, has blown over, things that have been covered up for a long, long time. Companies that have been forgotten like Hylion and thrown out the window to be discarded. I think that's one of the biggest mistakes that you can possibly make. And it's going to take a few short months here to realize once this company on the short term actually starts to garner a little bit of strength, garner a little bit of organic more momentum rather than succumb to my frustration that they can't manufacture some of that churn. It's very, very difficult to actually start momentum as opposed to just enjoy the snowball once it starts. Guys, if you appreciate the message, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments at the bottom of the video and share the message with anybody out there that's interested in this space, bring them onto the channel. I am the premier content creator on YouTube that shares highly on content every single week. There's nobody that's even a distant second from me. I'm the number one guy. I cannot give up on the project because it is too important for the reasons that I've outlined in this week's video as to understanding why I need to continue continually fuel the fire on this project and allow people to make their own decisions about how important it is 
right now at this point in time in 2022 to start thinking about our future as it pertains to putting the technology to work with the initiative of helping reduce the greenhouse gas emissions on the earth. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future. Thank you.